It's just a series of quotes that I like over time, and I've been gagging for years to try and get yoga into a presentation, <laughs> and here I have. So this is predominantly about people who are looking to market themselves, so size doesn't count. Good, e good evening, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, 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 thank you very much. Okay, where are we? Look, I guess so. one of the main reasons you guys are here this evening is that whatever industry you're from, whatever uh, you do, you're looking to sell more products. Would that be right? And the aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer. And it says it's personal. When anybody makes a recommendation, when anyone speaks to you about something they recommend, it's personal from them. And you guys do something which is very personal. And it's something which you have a massive advantage over the bigger players out there. Because it's such a personal experience going on holiday. It's honest, reliable and free. You know, people love it because it is honest. Have you heard anyone who does a personal recommendation and it's an out and out lie? Nobody does it, it's honest. People want to hear about somebody else who uses a product and has come back and said, yes, it works. Who, who is that guy with a beard who keeps coming on advertising that travel program, that travel thing, to go to Berlin? <laughs> I'm absolutely sick of it. There are some commercial breaks that comes on twice in the same commercial break. I'm going to Berlin, I've got a beard. Oh, go! You know, <laughs> stay, please, you know. 77% of people still communicate word of mouth face to face. A great experience, an unsatisfactory experience. That's one of the best. You get somebody who complains, yada, 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 you make it better for them, they tell heaps of people because they're not expecting it. What do our customers want? Our customers want good customer service. What are they going to tell their friends about? They're going to tell their friends about specifically this part of the cycle here, when they're happy, profitable, reliable, and we're available, when they've had good customer service, particularly when something's gone wrong, is that we can't compete with an Expedia marketing budget. They, they advertise on telly at 40 grand a week. <laughs> because what I want you to do with all those 10 products or services, you can do it in your head or with a piece of paper, did you choose that product based on an advert or a recommendation? When I regularly do this, uh, I get a score of around about eight and a half for a room full of business people out of 10 for a recommendation. But where does most of our marketing tend to focus? <laughs> On everything else but, right, personal recommendation. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? And most marketing treats people like on-off switches. You know, with the adverts that come on when you're watching a program on the TV, advert comes on, do this. Get out, I'm not interested. Let me watch the damn program, please. Here is a good example of supplier speak. One of my customers, a group called Link Fire, they provide health and safety coverage. They look after your fire extinguishers, your fire exits, all this sort of stuff, all this sort of stuff where we go, oh, please, somebody else do this. It's so damn boring. That's what they do. They had 25 trained service technicians. You know what, Luke, they've, they cover residential, com commercial as well. And 24-7 emergency response, John. What more could you want? Bit different, isn't it? You've got customer speak and supplier speak. Which do customers for Linkfire want to hear from the most, would you suggest? Do they want to hear what customers say? Or what Linkfire says about themselves? How do I make more dollars out of this marketing? How can I get word of mouth marketing to work for me? And it does work for you, and you don't have to put a lot of effort in. Always ask clients, if you don't know already, how did you come across me for this, to provide this product or service to you? You've got to have the reason. Why are you talking about me? Another thing to find out is, what was it they were saying about you? He's really a great exponent about asking for and getting feedback. You may have noticed it if you've ever been into one of his bakeries. Uh, Tom is probably the most hard-working baker I've ever come across. Started out with a very small bakery in a dying town, now has six bakeries. But in every bakery that you go into, you will see these forms. And not only is it available for every single customer, but he displays them on the wall. What I'd encourage you all to do is to capture feedback 
from your clients all the time. I'm a single person, I want to go skiing in goodness knows the Andes. I don't care what you say about it so much, I want to hear what a customer has had to say about it. And it's an interesting philosophy because customers speak in a different language and the language they speak in is experience. Any of you heard of Shintamani in Siem Reap? I think it's rated in the top 25 hotels in the world at the moment. Uh, it's uh, rated number one in Siem Reap. People go there and they come home with a religious type experience and fervor in the way they write about this place. But we didn't find the hotel as good as others suggested. The room was okay, but it was a bit dark, no view, shower was a bit tricky to get on, main light only worked some things. Cereals in glasses, you know, the knife and fork were a bit dirty. I didn't want the same fork for my pastries and a bit picky, but I don't know how I got the top 25 hotels in the world. Now, we've all had that customer. It's, you, know, you know what it is. But they've written, they've taken the time to do it. So as we were saying earlier, not a bad opportunity to go, let's turn it around. Copy and paste his standard reply to anything remotely bordering on a complaint. And if you go through, he talks about, um, thanks for your thing on TripAdvisor. I don't normally respond, but I do read them all. Uh, you'll find this pasted in about 30 times throughout. Um, CNN and TripAdvisor. Now, I don't remember a CNN reference that this customer made. We present Shintamani, four and a half star property, traditional star philosophy rating, yada yada. Both are rates and products are yada yada. Where we stand out, we're enormously proud of the fact that 275 people come in hospitality, staff received correct amount of holidays, blah blah. Now, what was the opportunity missed there? They complained about dirty cutlery, cereal in bowls, weren't so happy with that room, so on and so forth. And he's copy and pasted in something about CNN, rates and reflects, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Missed an opportunity to say, you know what, we're really sorry. If you ever find it in your heart, it's all to come back. We're going to put you up for a couple of nights, we're going to send you some flowers or whatever. It really does take the gloss off what is deservedly, in all fairness, one of the most benchmark hotels in the world. Ask him for feedback, three different areas really. What was, what was great, what wasn't so good, what would have made it even better? Or send them a copy of this form with a personally handwritten letter and with a, a stamped addressed envelope in there as well. But use their words. What was great? What was great about your holiday? Oh, what wasn't so good? Oh, this uh, person was a... I really wish I could have done this or had this. And that one is probably one of the most important ones of the lot. Because where you get people who say, you know what, I was on, went to Singapore, you arrive at an ungodly hour, and then you leave at midnight. And the people in the hotel kick you out at 11 in the morning. What the hell am I supposed to do for the rest of the day? I don't want to pay for another night because it's too much and I don't want to just stay in the room till three. I want something else. And you guys probably know of different ways in which you can satisfy a customer's need like that. We've heard from a lot of people that they hate this. They hate it. But we can do something for you. It'll only cost you a little bit more. And it's the small things that people talk about. So he's there with his wife talking about the caravan and she looked at the inside and said, you know what? I like the idea of having the full size table because we can all sit around and it's a family and eat. But it takes up so much space that really I'd rather have a half size table because then there's more space to put drinks on it. But I want the full size table as well. Or the half size, I'm not sure. This was a deal breaker, right? So the guy who's selling the caravan says, you know what? I think we've got a half size table around the back. I'll just get it. And here you go, it fits. I'll give you that for free. 40 grand, right? 40 grand. 40 grand on a caravan. So what did his wife talk about to everyone she came into contact with over the next few months? The half size table. <laughs> and how much was it worth? $150. 40 grand and a half size table. People talk about the small size. All right. What is the purpose of a promotional item? To get them to remember you, right? Hmm. When? Next one, putting it together. <laughs> so the destination is Hawaii. Who tends to go to 
why the most? Which particular group of people? This is where you've got to tailor the message to the group. So if you've got everybody who goes to Hawaii, really? Is it mostly families, mostly couples, mostly single people, mostly business? What is it? Does a business person want to have a different message to a family group? Tailor your message. What's the reason they're for holiday? Comments, what's important to the customer? What they love to store? And then you can put it on your website. In an initial questionnaire, use research, or you can make an offer. All sorts of things in there. But if anyone comes to see you and says, you know what, I've got a family, I want to go to Hawaii, this is what I want, well, let me tell you what some of my customers who went to Hawaii with a family had to say. So the video goes on, whistle, we've done 10,000 hours fixing and improving it to make it easier for you, our customer, the travel agent, to nail the sale because it's got an accurate product description. Mark, just wanted to say thanks for the correct room types. Grand Hyatt Singapore, I needed specifically the Grand Deluxe rooms. Expedia have Grand Rooms or Deluxe Rooms. Grand Hyatt don't have a room called Deluxe. $7,776.60, all yours, life's good. Robin Lawley, WOW Travel. What are you buying to more, the video or the written yeah. testimonial from another travel agent? Hey, it's Matt from Carry On here. You probably haven't heard of me before, but then again, why would you have? I'm not a customer of yours, and I haven't been referred to you by anyone that you know. But now come to think of it, I haven't heard of you either, for the very same reasons. So coming up next, we've got 10 great ideas that you can use in your business to help you get more word of mouth, and ultimately, sell more travel. So the key thing to remember here is that facts tell and stories sell. So firstly, we want to make ourselves useful. Secondly, we want to create authentic, memorable content that gets read. And thirdly, we want to spread the love so that we get, ultimately, more sales. Every great story needs a great headline. Yours should be punchy, no more than eight words long, and always a cue for people to find out more. What useful how-tos can you share with your customers? It could be ways to beat jet lag, what to pack for a cruise, or maybe tips and advice for people who are flying long haul with kids. How are we going to entertain them? They're all useful stories that people will want to share. Celebrate your local travel heroes. Remember Joan, the adventurous 85-year-old who you booked a crazy trip to Bali for last month? Look at what she got up to. Now that's a great story to tell. How about using your customers' own travel stories? Following on from the last point, instead of actually using their own personal experiences of the trip that you organised for. What expert insights can you share with your customers? Remember, knowledge is power and bragging rights for your customers and their friends. Make sure you always use lots of emotion in your stories. Remember again, facts tell, stories sell. Amazing things happen when people travel, so always try and tap into that raw emotion. What great customer service stories can you share? Remember, word of mouth happens much faster when you've already got a proven track record. Remember that trip you booked for the Anderson family, where they actually got stranded on their way back from Disneyland. If it wasn't for you, they'd probably still be there. Follow these stories up with the actual testimonials that come with them. Make sure you get a good referral from all of these customers that you're sending on these great trips. That way, you can turn them into great stories. Everyone wants certainty when they book a holiday. Real referrals will give people the confidence that you're the right person for the job. Reviews are a great way for you to share your expert knowledge and insights. The key is to make sure that your review is really clear on who that it's actually for. Write all about your own experiences and travels. So when telling your stories, always remember to pepper them full of useful information to help your customer have the best experience possible. That way, they'll come back raving about the trip and tell all of their friends and family how amazing it was and the fact that you organised it for them. That's great word of mouth marketing in action. Okay, so very quickly, five points. Great word of mouth is based on a user's experience. Find out the experiences of people, which is why you need to capture the feedback. Use their words. People love it because it's honest, and you guys picked up on that before when you saw the bit from Wild Travel. And customers prefer it. For any marketing you do, customers prefer the word of mouth, the comments from other people. The second one, find out who's recommending you, why and what's important to them. Third one, give the customer what they want. And oftentimes we don't necessarily, customers don't necessarily know what it is. But we do know when people complain you've gone to a similar destination. You sort that out, very important. Number four, determine your most profitable packs. That's passengers, yeah. destinations and market to them. So find out what's most profitable to you and market around that. 
finally always ask for feedback when you always use for feedback, ask for feedback and use it. Um, any questions? Before any questions, if I could get you to give some feedback to Martin for his, uh, as always, very engaging.